What's going on with everybody? It is your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the Pink Dungeon, giving it to your real raw rugged. And it's Christmas. It's not Christmas when you're watching this, but it's Christmas right now for me. I came home, still got in the clothes. I said, hey, I'm not finna take the clothes off. I'm not finna go eat. I'm not finna go watch all the football, basketball games on right now. I'm finna knock this video out for you guys. And this is my favorite albums of 2021. And uh, yeah, before I get into this, I always let you guys know this. Uh, I absolutely stink at rating things. I mean, honestly, tomorrow, the number five, the number three, the number one, the number 15 selection could be just completely different so this is how i feel at the moment and don't ask me hey why you got 27 why are you 25 why aren't you 30 you know what because i felt like it. i felt like doing 27 so that's a simple answer to that and i know i'm going to be super long-winded in this video so uh, i want to get this out as quickly as possible so let's not do any further ado hey by the way i just just learned out you don't spell uh further ado a space d-u-e is a d-o that's that blew my mind, didn't I? I found out today watching a game show. Uh, anyway, let's get into this. Uh, like I said, don't want to be as long-winded, but I know I am going to be. So, hey, with no further ADO, let's get right to this bad boy, man. Uh, I said it's 27. I lied. It's actually 26. <laughs> and that's why you know I'm just all over the place. But who cares, man? Let's get into it, man. And coming in hot at number 26, we got Lil Papa, Blessed, I guess. Good album, man. Super good album. Uh, I've interviewed Lil Pop on his channel before. Jacksonville rapper, um, young boy, and uh, he could rap. He could do a little harmonizing thing. He could switch it up. Very versatile because I know a lot of people want to hear the singing and whatnot. He could do that. Then he could just go and just rap, you know? So, I mean, he could really do a lot. Very, uh, very talented young man. Uh, some of my favorite songs are probably like Blessed, I guess, uh, with Sadie Hendrix. I love Sadie Hendrix doing a little, just very slight, like ad libs and singing in the background. But uh, what do you say? Uh, 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 you, you, what you saying, my love, at your best. If I would have done, my brother, my brother died with his gun. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm messing up the lyrics, but that song is fire. Mask on, um, Barbara Grandson. I mean, everything about this album is super duper good. So if you just want, some uh some some melodic singing mixed with some rapping you know there you go right there i would say if you're like probably like a little dirk fan or something but uh just a little bit more rapping on this album so yeah man shout out to jacksonville shout out to little papa and then we come in with number 25 dj lucas big bleep music volume 5 DJ, 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 DJ. Shout out to Wiki. Wiki is the reason I know who DJ Lucas is because I seen that Wiki did a song with him last year. Um, and I was like, what is this? And he, like, I was like, bro, who is this white man doing these dances with Stromile Swift bars? Like, this guy is, this guy's insane. Interviewed him. I'm like, I love this guy. And I love everything about this guy, man. This is a super duper good album. This might, I don't know, man. The album he put out last year was super good, but this. This is a good one as well, man. This is a really solid project. DJ Lucas is a New York white rapper who, I mean, I don't even know how to explain him. He would go over uh, rapping over a a a freaking Kate Bush sample drill type of beat. Uh, then he'll go into just like a rapidy hip hop New York beat. I mean, he really just does a lot. Then he'll do into like some some weird singing that he would do. Like he literally does a lot. He starts it off with lies. He's rapping over a sample. I mean, he is just going insane on that beat. I love fake the funk. Uh, what do you say? Um, I can't fake the funk. I am not your average white band. That is a super good bar. Uh, I'm in a brand new city. With the nigga Jimmy Kafka, I mean, that nigga was rapping. I don't know who Jimmy Kafka is, but that boy was going off of that. So, hey, man, like I said, this is one of my favorite albums of the year. If you just want some if you just want some good rapping, I would say DJ Lucas is good rapping mixed in with some experimental stuff. So that's that's how I would uh, define that. And, uh, yeah, man, shout out to DJ Lucas. He's fire. Next one, an album that I actually reviewed, number 24, Jameson Heals Me. I'm a big Jameson fan. Um, I didn't think that this was as good as Velvet. Velvet is probably my favorite album by him. Inferno is just a godly top tier song, 12 out of 10 song. But this is a, a, a good album too to me. Um, my favorite is, has to be 
What did I get myself into? When I met up, when I hear the jungle. Hey, that song is so hard to me. So yeah, man, Jameson Hills. If you don't know who Jameson is, singer used to be on a lot of the TD songs with Absol and them boys, and he got songs with Joey Fat. He was supposed to have a collab tape with Absol that never came out, and I would imagine that's probably never coming out at this point. Probably end up getting leaked three years from now. You know how those type of albums go, but yeah, Jameson Hills. Me is a really good uh effort by him a uh, very good singer man and a lot of spanish stuff went here which i wasn't expecting so yeah he switched it up and i, th I think it was a pretty decent release i, I like this album a lot then we go to baby tron uh ben reaper man baby tron usually he's either by himself or with the shitty boys and they're rapping over a lot of disco type beats you know very disco sampled uh very fast sped up type beats but he rapped over a lot of the Detroit type beats on here, considering he is from Detroit. And he just freaking just spazzed on everything from what? Paul Barrier to the intro to LeVar Ball with RTBMB, who has to be the best NBA rapper of all time. Little side note if you want to hear the best NBA rapper out ever and currently, it is Miles Bridges, aka RTBMB. Just type in RTBMB. Uh, hypnotize and listen you'll be like whoa this is crazy or better yet listen to rtbmb verse on this album it's the lavar ball song this nigga is talking crazy what that nigga said that nigga said he played lebron in so work what the lakers play i mean he's just saying a lot of stuff that nigga said uh he said i don't get he said i don't got a heart i only get happy when i tax a fiend i can't trust a bitch went behind my back like i'm zach levine <laughs> like that nigga is insane but rapping about slapping women popping perks i mean this i don't like i said if david if david stern was still in the league or if david stern was still the commissioner of the league he would have had that nigga damn selling fentanyl packs and flint by this time so shout out to adam silver for letting him uh rock because i've been good as gosh rtbmb is just talking crazy but baby tron i think this is the best baby tron album i've heard and that's that's a lot because you've had from the sleeve nash tapes to the to the um the one he put out uh last year i mean he he's really been on a, a tear but it feels like he tapped into a different type of zone as soon as he released Cade cunningham which didn't make this album but very fire song i was like yeah he's tapping into just a different type of bag and he's doing really really good so yeah man baby tron ben reaper you know i'm a big fan of detroit rap so yeah man super duper good and then we go to the golden boy i'm that nigga two part two he's not the nigga part one he is that nigga part two this is my favorite by far my favorite florida rapper right now i mean honestly i'm gonna keep it real this album has been played so much, and it came out on Thanksgiving. This could have, if this would have probably came out earlier, and he's put out three albums. I mean, from Chicken Man, Chicken Man 2, and then IDN 2. I mean, he has been on a tear. This album could have been way higher, bro. Like I said, like tomorrow, maybe, like when I look back at this, I'm like, man, I should have had IDN 2 higher because, bro, this is all I've been listening to to Boss Talk, to to what hush puppies to to everything on here bro uh bay raw i mean everything on this album is so hard master p bro he legit just went insane on master p if you want to hear what florida rap is becoming right now and what i'm loving because uh mr golden boy he's the dope man he doesn't really rap about killing niggas i ain't gonna pistol whip a nigga he rap about how he will sell uh a lot of weed he's a he said hey, i've dibbled and dabbled in the bricks but i'm a weed guy and i appreciate that very honest he's not trying to be the big time crack dealer nigga selling hair on the way hey, that's not as bad you feel me young niggas ain't doing that if you a young nigga selling hair on the crack you got to be a super duper tough guy and golden boy doesn't tell himself that he's like hey I'm a I'm a drug dealer, but I only sell I only sell Bubba. You know, it's a strain in Florida. He only sell Bubba, and he got rich off Bubba, and that's his thing, man. So, you know, you're gonna hear a lot of Bubba talk. You're gonna hear a lot of getting money talk. Like I listen to him, I'm like, bro, I want to go make some money. If you want to feel motivated to go make some money, go listen to this. You're gonna hear a lot of, hey, I'm smashing another guy's girlfriend. He doesn't like seal girls for whatever reason. He likes to smash another nigga girl. This nigga is just amazing. Freaking golden boy count up. He is not missing. I'm that nigga too. Hey, I might talk about this a little bit more and I'll talk about albums that's ranked a little higher. And like I said, I probably should have ranked this higher. But boy, I love this album, man. This is all I've been playing. So yeah, if you don't listen to nothing, bro, listen to Golden Boy. I'm that nigga too. Love it, love it, and love it. And then what we got? Rap Ferreira, Bob Son. Um, hey man, this is you know what? 
I'm going to interview Rap Ferreira soon. Uh, cat's out the bag. So uh, not that anybody cares about that as if like you're like, oh, my God. Like, people are going to really care about that. But I'm going to interview him soon. And I'm going to talk about this album it's super duper in detail because I did review it. So go check that out if you really want to hear my in-depth thoughts. But I really want to get into it even more when I uh, interview him. But this album is so fascinating to me. Just the way that he speaks and raps and the way that he thinks is very... Uh, philosophical and it's just his mind is a very interesting work and like I said it's coming from somebody who does psychology and just likes to study observe uh, analyze people and just really try to think about things on a deeper level I feel like he is a very similar person that's what kind of connected with me Dow Jeans on the auction block is just a crazy crazy performance bro and yeah man that guy is a super duper talented human being shout out to that young man right there um big big fan of rap Ferreira. just a very poetic album that's how i don't know how to put it it's just it's spoken word man spoken word over some beats super duper fire uncle john unk as a man thinketh didn't even know this album dropped. I had checked this out maybe a month and a half after it came out. And I was like, bro, why didn't I know this dropped? This this might be his best album. And from the album last year with Navy Blue to the to the to the to the the Jason tape he put out, I mean, those are just phenomenal pieces of work. But then he comes with As a Man Thinketh, bro. He is doing his best rapping. I have not heard him rap this well, this homeless sounding. I mean, everything that you want from Unk, from the funny bars, the dirty bars, the clever bars, the amazing production, the samples that's being chosen and sampled on here. I mean, this album is so good, bro. If you haven't heard Uncle John, just imagine... A nigga who will shank you, not even with like a proper blade or knife or something, with like a, a edge of a butt like glass, you know, like that type of human. This is Uncle John in that format, and he just raps and raps and raps. And I feel like if you haven't heard him before, this is the perfect entry album to listen to because I think this is his best album. And like I said, from the Fountain Blue to that bonus track, oh my god. Gosh, bro, that bonus track is my favorite track. And yeah, like I said, he just doesn't miss. Shout out to Uncle John, man. He he really came through with this album. And then we go to 19, somebody that I just mentioned a couple albums ago. Wiki, Half God. Shout out to Wiki. Uh, Wiki and I guess Navy Blue because Navy Blue produced this entire album. Such a good album. I mean, I, when I heard Roof, I think that was the lead single, if I'm not mistaken. I was like, yeah, this is going to be one of them ones. And I mean, from personal stories to just exhibits of just him being lyrical there's so much from great guest verses you got earl sweatshirt comes through and just does a i mean he just does earl i can't wait for that album you got sage come through he just starts spazzing this is such a good album man we keep i knew i like wiki when i heard him say on uh i forget which album it was he was like i'm 25 and i'm already the neighborhood drunk I was like, yeah, that's absolutely insane. Like, I've never heard a bar like that. He, that sums him up for, if you've never heard of Wiki, that bar, if that doesn't interest you, don't listen to it. But that interests me. I feel like that should have anybody hooked. Like, why are you 25 in the neighborhood drunk? And he speaks about why he is and his problems, his life, what he goes through. And yeah, like I said, that alone got me hooked. If that don't got you hooked, then maybe Wiki isn't for you. But man, this is a really, really good album. And once again, I think his best album. I feel like a lot of these people, these are their best albums that they put out in their discography. Uh, then we go to 18, Parquet Court, Sympathy for Life. Just like Uncle John. Had no clue this album came out until months afterwards. And uh, yeah, man, I, I'm a big fan of Parquet Courts. I first found them out when they released the album a couple years back. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is really good music. Start listening to all their previous works. Then you drop this, and I mean, this is just super duper fire, man. Uh, I don't even know how to explain what Parquet Courts is, who Parquet Courts is. It's like a it's like a rock band with just uh, little little pieces of alternative music in there. Uh, just very interesting music. I'm doing a terrible job explaining this right now, but oh um, yeah, man, I love that. I love these guys. They are super duper good, and uh, yeah, man, they came in at number eighteen. And then we go to seventeen with. Yo, I got a wrestling shirt on. West Side Gun. Hitler wears Hermes 8, Side 8. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to West Side Gun. I specifically have Side A on here because I think Side A, that's my favorite side. It is so many good songs on there. 
every feature hits stove got every time he's on he's just on uh freaking my Kami, every time he's on he is on margella split toes are you kidding me are you absolutely kidding me i mean that song is just ridiculous Westside gun did his thing all over here um what the, what the, what that nigga uh what that nigga stove got said we've been spinning in a we've been spinning nigga block so long we got dizzy that nigga was sliding on that song right there man this is a really really good album and uh like i said b was a really solid album as well but a just hit so so differently man shout out to west side gun he really came through with a very very solid project I'm not going to hold you. This might be right up there with one of his best albums. If not his best, this is top three in his discography, in my opinion. Super duper solid. Uh, an album that I should have reviewed, man. I didn't review it, and it, it hurts my soul because I'm like, this is going to be a teaser for something bigger. But then as the deluxe came out, I'm like, oh, this is like the album. Freaking Babyface Ray Unfuckwittable. Because it was an EP at first. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. Nigga, this album is so good bro it might be like two bad things with this album one baby not baby fish ray freaking money bag yo feature i'm just not a money bag yo fan what do you say uh she from oh what do you say uh she she got buffs on her she got buffs on her face so i know she from the d what i i, I don't want to hear this like cut that meme nigga off uh and jack harlow you know i'm a jack harlow fan i did not like his verse on paperwork party didn't think there needed to be a paperwork party remix paperwork party is one of the best songs of the decade man paperwork party i'm good on that paperwork woke up out of lean coma and went straight to work bro paperwork party is legit one of the greatest songs of our existence bro what that nigga say what he said he said cracked the, i cracked the seal open had to taste it first told my young nigga blow that shit i ain't never seen a money truck chase a hearse i didn't hey man that nigga said he broke that nigga said he dropped a pint broke the glad you like shag did oh my gosh man and like i said i did think that needed to be a remix but Everything else on here from freaking like Daisy Lane, Tahoe, uh, Million Dollar Thoughts, I'm in the cash race, ain't the last place. I mean, everything on here from Forever, Addy, uh, Pink Tins. Oh my, bro. E that showed me ESTG was one of the ones, bro. ESTG say, man, what the fuck? I'm like signing for 150 G's. That nigga was talking crazy on here, man. This album is just, it's unaffordable. Like you said, man, it's untouchable. Honestly, man, this could have been higher, bro. You feel me, man? I mean, this is the type of music I've been off of, bro. You feel me? Baby Face Ray. You know what I'm saying? Them Detroit niggas, man. Golden Boy. I mean, nigga make it want to go get some money, man. You hear me, bro? You you, you hear Golden Boy. You like, man, let me go let me go get some money real quick. You know, you hear, you hear Baby Face. You're like, man, let me go run up a few run up a few bands real quick. You know what I'm saying, man? Get money type niggas, man. A nigga just like Golden Boy that they ain't trying to be super duper tough guys. They're like, man, we just money getting niggas. You feel me? And I respect the get money type of nigga. You feel me? Because them type of niggas ain't trying to be the hit man. They ain't trying to be too thugged out, tough guy, or whatever. Hey. I'm just I'm just playing my role, getting money, man. And that's what they make me want to go do, bro. They make me want to go hop in my bag, go get some paper, man. So if you want to get in your bag, go get some paper, go get some money, man. Go feel like a, you know what I'm saying? Go feel like the man. Go listen to Unfuckwittable. This is one of my favorite projects of the year, bro. And then we come with number 15, Isaiah Rashad, The House is Burning, man. Uh, This is, I'm not going to lie, bro. When I first heard this, I liked it, but I didn't love it. But the more I listen to this, the more it grows on me. And the more I feel like in the future, people will be like, man, we kind of slept on this album. There's like a few songs or a few, just few parts that maybe like, oh, I could have been left out. But I think this is going to be a really good aging album. This is going to be like wine, bro. This will age way better than people uh, expect. And just mark my words on that. I don't know why I think that, but just from the singing, the production, I feel like it's timeless. You know what I'm saying? Like the way that nigga, uh, okay, I brought me awesome sign with some brand new wheel. Maybe meet me at the store. If I'm gone, don't trip, baby. Yeah. Bro, what, bro? Nigga, the house is burning the song. I mean, everything on here, bro, it just has a sound where it's like, man, maybe we judge this a little too early, but hey, I think this is going to be one of them ones that age very very gratefully and probably age better than some albums that i got it ranked higher as we got to see time will tell but yeah man Isaiah Rashad came through with this let me go to charlotte day wilson alpha hey this is 
This is that white woman right here, bro. Like I said, hey, uh, go to what's on that nigga. Hey, man, shout out to Wilson. She that white woman, bro. She is that white woman in 2021 for me, bro. She came through. She almost like the new Adele from America with some with some soul to her. I mean, Adele got the soul, but she got that. that I don't know where she from. I just assume she from the South. She got that Southern soul to her, man. Sid on this album. She slid. Everything on here. Mountains. Bro, that mountains, bro. It, it, she, she got a choir. I'm moving mountains. Mountains. I'm moving mountains. Bro, she was sagging on this bit right here, man. Super duper fire album. If you want a white woman with soul, like I said, if you ain't like a Dale album or you want some more Adele type of music, go check out Charlotte Day Wilson. That's my best uh, way to kind of describe her. And like I said, she got freaking uh, Sid on here. Sid never misses. So, yeah, man. Super duper hard. Then we go to, hey, an album that's. Uh, on my freaking underrated albums of the year list, Topaz Jones, uh, Don't Go Telling Your Mama. Hey, an album that made it onto my underrated albums of the year list, Topaz Jones, Don't Go Telling Your Mama. This is such a good project, bro, and nobody is talking about it, and it's confusing me. Like, this is legit one of the best albums of 2021. There's so much going on from great rapping, great singing, great music. He got the Gabriel Gar Garzon Mondo. I forget the nigga name. The nigga that Drake sampled with uh with uh with Jungle. The you know. Slowly, just like a baby don't you. He got that nigga on here. He went crazy. The nigga got Fonte and Maxwell on the same song, just sliding. I mean, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't like and want to listen to this album. This album is really, 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 really good, bro. Like, this is one of the best albums of the year, and nobody's talking about it, and it's confusing me. I love the song Buggin'. I would imagine it's a take on, like, the Frank Kafka Metamorphosis book or Buggin' by, um, not Buggin', by uh, Fly by Jeff Goldblum. Like, that song is super creative. Bro, go listen to this. There is, this is one of the albums that's going to be timeless because it's a lot of cool instruments and a lot of cool production, a lot of cool everything on here, bro. If you want to hear album and you listen to it and you're like, why is nobody talking about this album? Go listen to Topaz Jones, Don't Go Telling Yo Mama. I love, 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 love this album, man. So, so good. And then we go to number 12, Pooh Shiesty, Shiesty Season. Bit, brrr, a bit, brrr, bit, brrr. Hey, man, this nigga hit raw, man. Shout out to Pooh Shiesty, Shiesty Season. I have literally been listening to this album since it dropped. This is one of my most played albums of the year. It's not my most played album. I should, my most played album is coming up, and it's not number one, which is pretty ironic. But love this album. Don't know what them charges are looking like. It's not looking too good for Mr. Shiesty. But, man, he gave us a very good debut album. Then the freaking deluxe with See Me Coming. See Me Coming is his best rap in the day. If you're on the fence with Pooh Shiesty, should I listen to Pooh Shiesty or not? Listen to See Me Coming. And you'll be like, oh, okay. I got to listen to this. By the way, I got a freaking Apple Music and Spotify playlist in the description. So if you want to hear these songs or the best songs that I think are the best songs, go listen to the freaking uh, uh, playlist and you could decide for yourself, do I want to listen to this? Do I not want to listen to this? And there you go right there. And like I said, I put See Me Coming for the song of the uh, Shicey Season because, oh my gosh, you went crazy. But from uh, Murder School, Back in Blood, which I will not be happy until they put that song in the new Scarface. That song should be the like theme song for the new Scarface movie. Back in Blood is such a like That should be in John Wick. If it's not in Scarface, put that in John Wick 3 because John Wick 4, whatever John Wick they're on because, boy, that song is beautiful. Um, What else is on here, man? I mean, uh, Churches. With freaking 21, everything on this album hit. C Red, this album is just great, bro. Uh, Bo, my nigga, C Red. Oh, my nigga, they going in the head. Hey, this song is that song is hard. And uh, I've seen somebody say that that nigga Pooch actually talked like a Neanderthal, which made me laugh. And every time I hear him talk, I just think about that. So, yeah, man, uh, Pooch Icy, Shy Season, super good album. Silk Sonic and Evening with Silk Sonic. Just reviewed this not too long ago, um, and you guys know I love this album. There's a couple songs I could have did without, but this is a spectacular album. No, it's getting... It's either people love this album or people hate this album, and I get it. I get it, but hey, I loved it. Uh, freaking Leave the Door Open, Fly Is Me, um, This Bitch Got Me Paying For It, Living For Trips, 
Diamonds on my neck and diamonds on my wrist. Hey, what, bro? I mean, this is, I mean, after last night, I want to make love to you. And then you got Boosie Collins with the, I tried, I tried. Bro, what? This album is so fire, man. If you ain't enjoying this, I, I feel sorry for you, man. I love Silk Sonic in the evening with Silk Sonic. Super duper hard album. Like I said, I don't praise this enough. You probably haven't heard enough about it. Don't really got to go too much into it. And now we're here with number 10. And this is my most played album of the year. And that is no other than Los and Nutty. Pussy ass nigga ain't got no love for him. Volume 3. I absolutely love this album bro i cannot stop playing this from top to bottom bro i play everything the skits included bro heroin charges man nine times out of ten if you go good i'm going again ku klux klan swang on them uh competition 100k in three days passing out checks i mean bro everything on this album hit these are some niggas who sell fentanyl to trailer park trash white people and they talk about it It is the most fascinating like i'm getting tired of niggas talking about how much drugs they sold i need a perspective bro and their perspective is interesting because they sell fentanyl to a lot of trailer park trash white people. They tell specific stories about them. One of my favorite songs by them is WB Nutty, The Ride. And he's talking about being dropped off by these junkies um, and how they're like freaking in the car while and out. He's scared. Um, he said uh, that one of them tried to shoot up heroin in their toes. And uh, what do you say? He said, uh, what do you say? He said, that's not what we're doing. You better get used to it. You better be, you better be lucky I let you listen to this white music or something like that. Like the way that he just described the whole situation is crazy. And yeah, I love their perspective just because it's like, okay, like I'm actually getting an actual perspective, not just general, I so dope or whatever. Like, oh, this is like what they really went through or whatnot. And um, yeah, love these niggas, man. Los and Nutty, my favorite. Detroit album of the year, which is uh, pretty crazy. I love all them niggas, but yeah, man, they came through with the one. And then we go to number nine, Ka Martyr's Reward. Come on, bro. You thought I was going to leave Ka out of here? I did not review this. I didn't get a chance to. I should have. But I mean, bro, this nigga legit needs to narrate the next Batman movie. His voice is just so ominous and the way that he talks. His life should be a movie. He should narrate it. Like, bro, if I ain't know no better, I would have thought this nigga was damn born in war-torn Syria, bro. The way this nigga rap about his life and upcoming, it's like, bro, how did you survive this? And how is this being done in America? But if you listen to anything about Brownsville from, like, the 70s, apparently it was just complete chaos. And, yeah, man, this nigga Kyle was in his bag on his album. Uh, the, the, the freaking bar about um, what he said... He, the, 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 the bar about the four horsemen, about how he's seen all of them, that was crazy. The second track on here, that one legitimately makes me want to go put on a beret and a whole Black Panther fit and just go, just fight the power. And he said, they, they stole my land, my name. Like, the way he started going about what they stole from him, what they took from I was like, bro, this make me want to go run through a brick wall. You remember that one... Um, freaking ray lewis speech on that madden game that he gave i legit watch that every time i play madden i want to run through a brick wall this gave me that same type of feeling so yeah man shout out to ray lewis and ka for being on the same frequency level of thinking that's pretty cool and now we're going to number eight spelling the turning wheel a beautiful beautiful black woman black queen love spelling love everything about her i interviewed her a few years back and I was like, man, not only do I love her music, I just love her as a human. Then I freaking interviewed her again when she dropped this. And I was like, I just love her more as a human. She's so freaking great. Um, this album, oh my goodness, bro. I thought freaking um, her last album was going to be the one. I'm like, okay, this is like, how can she top this? She comes and brings violins, all of these instruments. She brings my absolute favorite instrument in the mix that should be used way more in music. The bassoon, the bassoon on this album is amazing, bro. And I mean, this is the album that hey, if you watch YouTube, you probably know Fantano, no needle drop. He gave it a ten out of ten. You know, that's not a a, a common thing. That's a rare feat, definitely for somebody is uh kind of you know underground as her. She's not like a big super superstar name or whatnot. She should be because she has superstar talent. But man, this is a lovely album, bro. Little Deer is crazy, bro. Little Deer sounds like Bambi. It sounds like if you're going to see Bambi in a play, but you took acid beforehand and Bambi was floating through the, the crowd the entire time. Like this album is insane. That's how it starts off with Bambi. I remember with Little Deer. Uh, 
Bro, that is amazing songwriting, amazing freaking uh, strings playing. I mean, bro, go listen to Little Deer. If you don't like Little Deer, then hey, maybe it's just not for you. But yeah, man, this album is absolutely chef's kiss. And then we go to Arm & Hammer. Haram, man. Uh, freaking Alchemist, bro. I mean, the best producer of all time. He can produce for a Bodie James to these niggas to a Earl to a Freddie Gibbs to a Currency to literally anybody. I feel like he could probably do an album with Duke Deuce if he wanted to, bro. Anybody he wants to. Imagine like freaking Pooh Shiesty and Alchemist are. Really, we need Alchemist and G Herbo. That would actually be mind melting music. But hey, we're not here for that right now. We hear about Arm and Hammer and Alchemist, and they just absolutely put out amazing music bro stone fruit i don't even know what genre of music that is i still need to figure out what genre of music that is because i don't know it is absolutely just mind-bending stuff uh sir benny miles roaches don't fly everything on this album is just like what is happening like, is this rap like are they redefining what rap music is so that's what i feel like when i'm listening to a lucid and uh and and freaking billy wood sometimes so yeah the fact that alchemist got this weird i've never heard him get this crazy sometimes on like his instrumental tapes he could put out some out there stuff but having people rap over these he this is his most experimental out there left field album and i just hope i can interview alchemist one day because i want to ask him like where was your mind when you were making these beats like stone fruit what genre is that i don't know so hey lovely 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 album it's not lovely it's actually like kind of kind of creepy sometimes but it is very very great and then we go to number six james blake friends that break your heart you know my one of my favorite artists of all time uh not my favorite album by him but everything on here that is a high it is i feel like some of the highest in his career like lost angel night um famous last words like some of those moments on there like yo this is like some of his best work ever freaking metro on foot forward foot forward foot forward foot forward foot forward <laughs> hey man and it's okay as long as you say bro i love that right there like i said the highs on here are the highest i feel are some of the highest in his career and um yeah man i don't have to talk about james but you know i freaking talk about this guy way too much lovely album number six and number five we got mike once again i want to thank that brother not that he's going to see this or anything but i want to thank him for letting me interview him as you know mike if you know mike he doesn't do interviews at all and if he does it's very rare or just for like you know like a bigger publication or something so the fact that he let me interview him i think that's like one of his first or if not his first like actual real video interview and the fact that he let me do that i appreciate that so much thank you mike uh what a, what a great guy he is and what a great album man evil eye bro that's one of my favorite samples of this year sideshow has one of my favorite features of this year he also has one of my favorite lines of this year on his album we say he say he say uh you see these fucked up braids mom trying to get paid that bar right there just showed me i was like bro that's a broke nigga trying to get to it hey sideshow my nigga listen to some um golden boy and baby face man nigga run up all types of racks man but nah this album is beautiful a little bit more upbeat than uh uh some of his older albums but i mean bro this album is beautiful man from freaking airdrop uh I mean, this nigga was just in his bag, bro. I feel like he was rapping better. He, what he said, he said, I dropped the weight and the written's got better. So, I mean, that just shows you that he knows he's getting better. And yeah, bro, Disco is really, really, really fire. I wish I could have seen him in in um, person because I watched a couple of videos in performing and he has energy. In the, in the, in the booth, it may seem like he's kind of like chilling, lazadaisical, but boy, he has energy when he's rapping live. So, yeah, man, shout out to Mike. Super duper hard. Uh, then we go to something that I did. I don't know if I've ever done this before, but I got Navy Blue, both of his albums, the one that dropped late 2020, so I'm counting as 2021, Songs of Sage, and then we got the one that dropped this year, Navy's Reprise. I reviewed both of these. Another brother that didn't have to let me interview him, but he did. Shout out to Navy Blue. Uh, just order one of his hoodies. Uh, fits very nice. And uh, yeah, man, that guy is... You, y'all, if you've ever watched anything where I've talked about him, you know how I feel about this guy. This is going to be one of the most important people, I feel like, of our generation. I feel like he's going to be a big actor. I feel like this guy's going to do some really, 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 really cool stuff. And um, 
Yeah, man, from his production to his rapping, I mean, he just doesn't miss. Songs of Sage, I don't feel like getting into this again, because I reviewed this, I guess I reviewed both of these, just go look at the review, but man, if you just want some, if you want to hear just some amazing music, bro, like, like this is like basically, um, uh, this is basically Jill Heron Scott reincarnated, if you ask me, you know, so if that interests you, go listen to it, and uh, yeah, man, that's, it's my favorite rapper right now, bro, he's been my favorite rapper for the past two years. Um, him and Golden Boy. Him, Golden Boy, that's kind of all I be listening to, man. If I ain't listening to Golden Boy, I'm listening to Navy. If I'm not listening to Navy, I'm listening to Golden Boy. Uh, number three, man. This album, bro, I found out about late. I interviewed this man, and I had to interview him, and I did something. You should know I listen to him because I did something I've never done before. I interviewed him, and when I interviewed him, I reviewed the album live in the interview instead of doing it like I do in, right here in the Pink Dungeon. So that's how much I had to get the review out that I was like, okay, I, this review came, I mean, this album came out way earlier than I knew it did. So let me review it to you live because I think this guy is, man, one of the most special rappers that we got out right now. And that's Bruiser Wolf. The, the, the dope game's stupid, but the boys still do it. The, the, the dope game's stupid, but the boys still do it. Bro, I, it's way too many lines. I mean, the this guy has the best lines of 2021 of an album just one-liners there's nothing better bro that nigga said you say by felicia i say how to fiends what like what am i supposed to do like <laughs> like 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 bro that dude right there this is sugar free of sugar free didn't rap about pimp but just dope and he said he didn't really know about Sugar Free when he started rapping. That was just a style that he came, you know, into, which make it more remarkable. So, bro, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I do the pimp rapping videos. So when I heard this, I was like, oh, this is what kind of like I do, but just way better and just like way more creative than I could have ever thought. I love Bruiser Wolf, man. This nigga here is so good, bro. The the third best album, bro. Third, the second best rap album, because there's one rap album coming after this. Yeah, man, like I said, go listen to it, uh, sign to Danny Brown, and just listen to this album. I, I can't stress it enough. This is, bar for bar, might be the best album, because the way that he's thinking, it's just like, I first heard him on the Alchemist Project, where that nigga said, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, it's a lot of things I ought to buy you, you know, bam. I was like, bro, what is happening right now? That's a bam out of Bayou Bar. He's a basketball player. How did he think of that? I don't know. This guy is spectacular. Just stay out what he has uh, coming out next. I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be amazing. And then we go to number two with the rap album of the year, in my opinion. Makami, Pray for Haiti. Well, that means that the number one album is a rap album. It's not a rap album. Uh, but yeah, Pray for Haiti, man. I mean, Makami, bro. What he did on here is just remarkable. That nigga said he's so fly, he could make Megan hop out and get the Duchess. That is what? He can make Megan Markle hop out and get the Dutch? I mean, come on. I, that's that's bar of the year, if, if you ask me. Um, and yeah, like I said, just so many crazy bars on here. Uh, the beats. Westside did his thing with the executive producing. Then he comes out and he puts out hot candles, which, I mean, it's only seven songs. I, like, I don't know if I can put it on here as an album. But, bro, this dude went crazy on Pray For Haiti. And I'm pretty sure you've been seeing it. If you want to hear the best rap album of the year, a Haitian dude just rapping his behind off over just amazing beats, go listen to this album. That's all I got to say. I feel like uh, everywhere that he's been, freaking Drake reposting him. Drake reposting him. My economy is like, yo, this nigga here, he's touching the underground and the superstars. So, yeah, man, go check that out. And, uh, yeah, we're going to end it off with the album of the year. <sighs> Hiatus Coyote Mood Valiant is album of the year, bro. Nothing is better. Napalm, dare I say it, is the closest thing we'll ever get to another Erica Badu. Erica Badu is still here, but of this generation, we have nothing close to that. And if it is going to be somebody, it's going to be Napalm. That beautiful queen right there. I love, love, love her. I love the band. Um, yeah, man. I don't even know what to say, bro. If you want to hear just the best album, if you want to hear something that's just mind blowing from the vocals to the songwriting to the to 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 the production, everything is on here. She, Napalm is the lead singer of this band, Hiatus Coyote, and boy, she can sing. And um, like I said, it's it's really like Erica Badu. In, in this generation. And if that doesn't interest you, then maybe I'm subscribed because Erica Badu is legit maybe like a top three artist in my like favorite artist list of all time. So hey, 
there's that. Love that album. I reviewed that album. If you really want to hear me talk about that in detail, go look at that album review. Don't want to talk your head off. I've been talking way too long. Got to trim this down a little bit. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I am hot. I got to take off these clothes. I appreciate you guys. And uh, until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters going to hate. Uh, uh, players going to play, man. Y'all holla at your boy, no, man.